Hello and welcome back. My name is Ned and in the second video of this course I will teach you how to create a foundation of this patient portal application by first setting up the database tables and second by creating relationships between the tables using primary and foreign keys. Let's have a look. To begin building an application in Caspio all you need to do is click on this link new app and here you have two options on how you can begin. You can either import data from an external source, so if you have data in Excel or Access database, you can bring that data in, or if you want to build your application from scratch, you can click on the second button to start from a blank template. So let's do that. Next step is to give your application a name. You're going to have your own naming convention in terms of the application that you want to develop. For example, if you're building a CRM, you can call it CRM. If you're building inventory management, you can call it inventory management. In our example today, in this video guide, we're going to build an application called Patient Portal. And after giving your application a name, just click on Finish, and you should be able to see that application listed. From there, all you need to do is click on Open. And when you open up any application in Caspio, you're going to be able to see these objects on the left-hand side. And you're going to use these objects to build your application. The most important place where you want to begin is always going to be the tables object. Tables are the foundation of any app that you develop inside Caspio. That's where all of your data is going to reside. And in this particular application, we're going to have a total of five tables. One table for doctors, one table for patients, one table for patient visits, one table for messages, and one lookup table that's going to have all of the statuses for each patient. To build a table, all you need to do is click on this link new table. And I'm going to begin by inputting the fields for patients. And I'm going to quickly populate this table with all the necessary fields. And then I'm going to explain each of the fields and also the corresponding data type that was associated with that particular field. At this point, feel free to pause the video and input the same fields as I have in my screen. I'm going to go ahead and explain each of the data types that I have selected. So for example, patient ID, every single table that you create inside Caspio needs to have some kind of a unique ID. This is also referred to as the primary key inside the table because it uniquely identifies each row inside a table. If you click on the data type column, you will see that Caspio gives you four different ID types that you can select. I chose random ID, but you can just as easily select any of the other ones from auto number, prefixed auto number, or GUID. It just depends on the nature of your application and what you're building. Then we have name, which is self-explanatory. It's going to be a text 255 because that can hold up to 255 characters. Phone, age, gender, insurance carrier, and policy number are all going to be text 255. Family medical history, I chose data type called list string. This data type allows you to have multiple checkboxes within a single field. And if you look over here to the right, this is where you're going to input all of your values for your checkboxes. So by removing these default options that are listed, now you can add your own options inside this window. So for example, one of them can be cancer. You can have asthma, high blood pressure, and you can list any of the other ones in terms of medical history. For the field underneath that, we have habitual consumption. Also chose list string. Once again, I'm going to remove these values and add my own. So let's have tea, coffee, and perhaps other. Of course, again, as I said, you can list your own values, as many as you want. How often do you exercise? I chose text 64,000 because this type of data type can accept up to 64,000 characters. Same thing for medication taken. Email, I turned that into a unique field as well because different patients are going to have different emails. You're never going to see two different patients in the table with the same email. Password, I chose special data type called password because it encrypts the table on the table level. We have patient status, account status, which I chose to be a yes or no. It's a checkbox. What this is going to allow the doctor to do is to simply make the patients active or inactive. In other words, if I make a patient inactive, I uncheck the box, this patient will no longer be able to log into the application. And finally, for date registered, we have a date and time because I would like to stamp when that patient created an account. Once you're done inputting all of your fields and making all of your data type adjustments, go ahead and save your table now and give it a name. I'm going to call this UVG, HC for healthcare, and patient info. 
So the prefix UVG is going to stand for Ultimate Video Guide, HC for Healthcare, and then Patient Info. Of course, you're going to have your own naming convention for your tables. This is the one that I chose for my application today. And as soon as you're done inputting your table name, go ahead and click on Finish. And there's our first table. This table is going to store all the patient information. Okay, so I went ahead and created all five tables just to speed things up a little bit. I'm going to open up each table using the design mode. That way you can see the table, the fields, the data types, and copy whatever I have in the video inside your own applications. So let's go inside a doctor table next. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. But what you'll see in my fields, I have doctor ID as my very first field. I'm also choosing random ID as the data type to uniquely identify each doctor inside the table. My name and email fields are text255. For the email, I'm using a unique field because you can't have two different doctors with the same email. My password field is going to be encrypted because I chose the password special data type. And finally, we have account status, which is a checkbox, yes or no, to once again allow the admin to be able to make the doctor active or inactive. Let's go back out to the tables menu. We'll take a look at the visits table next. And once again, what you'll see is I have the uh, visit ID as the very first field. That's going to be a random ID data type to uniquely identify each visit inside a table. Underneath that, I have doctor ID. We want to be able to stamp the doctor's ID in this table so that we know which doctor saw that patient that came in for a visit. Underneath that, we have patient ID. We're also trying to stamp the patient's ID in the visits table because we want to know what patient came in for a visit. Then we have date of visit, reason for visit is going to be text 64,000. And then finally we have weight, temperature, pulse, systolic, and diastolic reading. These fields are going to be number data types because we want to capture numerical data inside that field. So later on we can do some calculations on our reports. And finally we have doctor notes, that's going to be text 64,000 so that we can input more internal notes as a doctor. Let's go back out to the tables menu. Let's take a look at the messages table. And inside this table, we once again have a primary key. Uh, I chose message ID as my field name, and I chose my data type to be random ID. You can see how Caspi immediately flagged it as a unique field. Once again, we have the doctor ID and patient ID as foreign keys because we want to be able to track who was the doctor to have sent that message. And we also want the patient ID inside this table because we want to know who was the patient to have received that message. We have date sent because we want to know when that message was sent. Message itself, that's going to be text 64,000. And as my very last field, I have attachment. Notice that I'm using data type called file because now I want to be able to attach an image or a document and submit that to the patient's portal. For example, if you have lab work or maybe an x-ray image and you want that file to be sent to the patient, you can submit that file and now the patient can log in and be able to retrieve that information. Let's go back out to the tables menu again. And the last table that we're going to look at is the status lookup. It's a very simple table. We only have two fields. I have my primary key as status ID. For this data type, I chose auto number. And underneath that, we have patient status, which is just going to be a text 255 data type. Go to data sheet tab now and just input these values. You'll see that patient can be marked as new, pending, enrolled, or rejected. The reason why you may want to reject a certain patient is let's say that the office doesn't accept their insurance carrier. So in that case, you may reject that patient and not be able to give them treatment. Once again, let's go back out to the tables menu. And the last thing that we're going to do in this video is learn how all of these tables are connected together using primary and foreign keys. And in Caspio, the way you do that is by going to the relationship screen. For those of you who have an access background or have done some database work in the past, this screen will look very familiar to you. What you can do here is you can include all of your main tables. So I'll include all four of them. I'm not going to include the status lookup table because that's not really connected to any table. It's just going to be used as a drop down to look into patient status. But once you include your main tables inside this window, you can move them around anywhere you want. I'm going to position my doctor table here in the upper left. I'll move the patients table in the bottom left, messages here, and then we can have the visits table up here in the upper right corner. It's completely up to you how you position these tables. Some people like to go left to right. Some like to go top to bottom. My personal preference is to work left to right. So now how do all four of these tables connect together? Well, we know that a patient can have multiple visits. 
and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, when you go see your primary care physician, you don't just go once, you might have an annual checkup, so that physician will see you more than once. So what we want to do is we want to drag over the patient ID, which is the primary key from this table, and we want to drag that over to the foreign key inside the visits table. Once you let go, you're going to get this pop-up. All you need to do here is make a few more adjustments in terms of your settings. I'm going to leave this as is for now, but later on in the video guide, we'll come back to this, and I'm going to show you how some of these options affect the way your applications function. So for now, we are just going to click on Create, and what you'll notice now is that a single patient can be linked to multiple visits. And based on this relationship, we're going to know who was the patient to have come in for that visit. But we also want to know who was the doctor to have seen that patient. So we want to drag the doctor ID from this table to the visits table. Let go, hit create one more time, and now you can see that a single doctor can see multiple patients. And finally, we have the messages table. Once again, we want to drag over the patient ID from the patient table and link that to the foreign key in the messages table. Hit create. And what this connection is telling us is the single patient can be linked to multiple messages. And we also want the doctor ID to be linked inside this table as well because we want to know who was the doctor to have submitted that message. So it's a very simple database relationship inside this patient portal application. And just by looking at this, you have a really good understanding of your schema and how all of your data is related in terms of their common values. And data should always be linked via primary keys and foreign keys from one table to another. Thanks for watching the second video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And join me in the next video where I show you how to create the login screen for both the doctors and also the patients. I'll see you there.